Everyone, so in this video, we are going to go through the biopsychosocial influences that sleep has in general on your life, on our life, and what poor sleep getting down to the level of the nervous system in our psychology and how that plays out in your behavior at large. This is taken from a post that I made over my social media. You can find me mostly on Instagram at Perform Through Health. And we're gonna dive straight in to this. You're gonna enjoy it, you're gonna take a lot of value from there and you're really gonna understand the impact that sleep has on you as a whole. Right, so we're gonna delve straight into this here and we're gonna really talk about to begin with the impact that sleep has on our biological aspect. So we're talking about the body here in this top part of the section, the, the, the blue um, circle and that, how that overlaps with our psychology and our, our social life as well. So if we're thinking about down at the level of the nervous system and we're really here, we're gonna talk about the peripheral nervous system. So that is broken off into two parts. We're broken off into the sympathetic, which is basically our stress, res our stress response. It brings up our level of arousal or makes us feel more stressed if we per se. And then on the other side of things, we have the uh, parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest and digest side. And when we get into sleep or when we get into deep sleep, sleep specifically, we really get like into the state of deep, calm rest, deep parasympathetic nervous activity. We go into this unconscious state and that allows our body to recover, to rejuvenate, to to go back into homeostatic balance so that during the day we can take action, we can be focused and our body can really stay um, primed in, in its, in its uh, ideal state. Now, when we get less than six hours sleep or if we get real poor quality sleep, say for example, you've got an issue such as obstructive sleep apnea, what happens is our body sways more towards this sympathetic state. So we get what's called sympathetic overdrive. Now in the immediate, that's not really gonna be that noticeable there's not going to be too much uh, a difference however if you're recording trackers such as aura rings or whoop bands and you're looking at your heart rate variability you notice have a poor night's sleep your heart rate variability is a lot lower and that's because we have more of the sympathetic tone but in the long term this is actually going to have effects on our health and the majority of the chronic health diseases we see today such as high blood pressure uh, uh, strokes cardiac um, issues they're all to do with this this term sympathetic overdrive so influence has a large sleep has a large influence on our overall health and our well-being at the level of the nervous system now what does that do to metabolic activity in our body well we know that the nervous system basically controls is the controller of everything. And what this then does to our metabolic state is it puts us into what's called self-preservation. So we go into a state where we're more likely to be hungry, our appetite increases. Um, and that is because our, uh, you know, we're spending more time awake. If you think about it, you're spending more time awake, then your body might be uh, uh, believing that there's more time to forage um, and that you need more resources. So it's almost like this uh, evolutionary process has occurred that more wake time means more feeding, more energy expenditure, et cetera, et cetera. However, it alters our metabolism down at a level that um, we are less likely to use fats as a fuel. We're more likely to use proteins. And therefore, if you're an individual who works out and you're an individual who um, you know, takes care of themselves as a strength athlete or someone who just generally wants to have a little bit of muscle on them, then having poor night quality sleep is actually going to reduce your ability to, um, you know, put muscle on, it's also going to uh, reduce your ability to lose weight as well. So your metabolic system changes into this, into this process of self-preservation. And that happens because we get these changes in hormones. And at the level of the hormones, we really get a, uh, a shift towards, um, like I've already said, our appetite regulating hormones such as ghrelin. Uh, ghrelin is a hormone that makes us feel, feel more hungry. That is actually increased. So therefore we're more likely to uh, feel that intrinsic hunger and our leptin levels, which is our satiety hormone also reduces as, as well when we get poor quality sleep. So there's this misbalance. And also that, that changes it within our brain chemistry and our brain chemistry uh, seeks out more dopamine. So therefore our secret system's elevated 
And that has this kind of impact that we reach for, you know, highly palatable, enjoyable foods, which obviously isn't great when you're in the self preservation mode, especially if you're an individual who therefore is tired because they're not sleeping well and are not moving often, which is going to contribute massively to an obesity crisis as it already does. Then how does that influence and interact within our psychology? Well, we know that when we get poor quality sleep, that there's a massive increase in things such as anxiety and depression and mental health or, or disorders, not only because of the state and feeling that you're in and the lack of resilience that you have, but you actually have this kind of um, disconnect between your prefrontal cortex and your brain, which is our rational style of thinking style of brain, and the amygdala, which is the kind of the fear uh, processing part of our brain, and also the insula. And the insula is how we actually feel our internal sensations, a concept known as uh, intelligence so how we become more aware of our emotions and when we're in sleep this kind of uh, link with uh, poor sleep when we have poor sleep this link between all three is is just really disturbed so you're more likely to prone to be issues such as uh, seeking out threats um, and also to feel down, to feel like you're, uh, you know, you're lacking animation, which is what uh, depression is. And if you think about it, you know, if you're uh, taking it back to evolutionary ancestry things, if you've had a poor night's sleep, then you're vulnerable. So your brain and your psychology should be primed for uh, threat detecting uh, issues, such as uh, you know, what anxiety is, that heightened level of stress, heightened perception that things around you are, uh, are threatening. And when we talk about these sort of things, obviously in, that isn't going to have an impact on our emotional regulation. So, you know, if you've had a poor night's sleep, you know that if you've gone out the night before and you wake up and you know, your partner, your mom, your husband, whatever that is, they say something that you don't quite agree with, or it just kind of it hits you a little bit more. It triggers you a little bit easier. Uh, you might flip a little bit easier and you might use words and say things and do things that you kind of don't want to do. If you'd had a poor, good night's sleep, you might have been okay doing that. Um, and that's because of the four processes that do, then do come up. And the four processes are more what we call negative affect. We're more sensitive to negative emotion. We're more neurotic. So it really has this kind of uh, you know, change within our mind as well that might not be noticeable immediately, but over long term is going to have a, a detrimental impact on uh, you know, both your, your, your psyche as well. Obviously, then that is going to link and lay over into your personality. So if we're to talk about personality using the big five theory or the big five domain, we've got extroversion, introversion. I believe that um, when we get poor quality sleep, that actually makes us more introverted. And it's probably the, the literature out there is that, no, we don't want to be with people, close to people, uh, connecting with people as much because we're just tired and, um, you know, our, our insular part of our brain, our, our psyche, our, you know, our, our neurology is, is wired to, to, to move towards just being alone and hiding away like a bear in a cave. So we're going to become more introverted. Then we're also in, in the level of neuroticism. We're going to be more affected by negative emotion uh, just simply because of this tie and uh, you know, there's changes in our psychology that I just talked about. In terms of your openness, um, I would say that what happens here, you, you know, you've got one side which is going to be open, one side that's going to be conservative. I think that this might actually make you more extremes on the old end. So a conservative person will be more conservative, less likely to take risks, whereas someone who's open, if they are um, you know, lacking sleep, they're probably more likely to take risk or more likely to say yes to things and have lack boundaries and uh, potentially push themselves into new orders. And this, we can see this with creatives. Creators are very high open trait, uh, trait in, in trait uh, openness. And they often talk about, you know, very creative people talk about they often their creativity is spurred through um, you know, poor sleep or sleep deprivation. And uh, this will come down to brainwave activities and change in the brainwave states, but also probably down to changes in the personality type as well. Then we've got conscientiousness, which is, um, you know, how much work your, or, 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 or action you can take in the world. And I believe that with poor sleep, your con level of conscientiousness is going to reduce. We know that you can enjoy the, uh, you know, the fast foods on the sofa, you can lay down more, um, you're less likely to take action on your work and the, your day to day duties. So you become less conscientious. Then in the final one in the big five personality scale is, is, is agreeableness. Um, so you've gone one scale of being highly agreeable. So an individual who, uh, we might be empathetic, might be 
um, uh, you know, more likely to adapt to the individuals around them than you have disagreeable, which is the opposite. You know, someone who is unique and uh, doesn't believe what other people's beliefs and kind of not open to uh, agree agreeing with people. And I generally think that you no know, lack of sleep is going to make most people more disagreeable. You're going to lack that empathy, you're going to lack that connection, lack that understanding um, to a certain extent in certain behaviors. I think if there's an authority figure then, and you're an agreeable person, then you're more likely to be more submissive and more agreeable in that situation if you're tired and fatigued. Um, you know, if you think about how they've used sleep deprivation in hostage situations, that they are more likely to get information from hostages when they are sleep deprived, probably down to this you know, agreeableness, the, you know, the whole changes in the, you know, their, their bodily states and their, their psyche, and just generally feeling really tired. However, um, then a whole personality shift is not going to happen overnight. This is going to happen over a long period of times. And this is really going to have an impact on your relationships, both your personal and you know, sexual relationships and not your relationships with your friends and families and even your work relationships, because you are going to change as an individual as you get less and less quality sleep or poor quality sleep. And same for the inverse. You know, I've had worked with clients before who are, um, have had tens of years of poor quality sleep and all of a sudden, you know, for example, they've got sleep apnea and they get put on a CPAP machine and overnight their, their, you know, their, their life can change and their personality can change. They're more brightly, they're more sprite, they're more, uh, they stand up for themselves. They can think a lot clearer. They can take care of themselves. And this can do one of two things. It can either strengthen relationships and people start to have better sex, better connections, and, you know, uh, really see each other for how they are. Or if they have always been like that and it's a mad large change, then this can actually break up relationships because people kind of realize that actually who I truly am when I'm awake is, is um, uh, it, or when I'm feeling alert and vigorous is, is nowhere near the person that I want to be. And they start exercising, they start changing their behaviors, their habits and whatever. And that individual just becomes different to the person that maybe they married or even become. And then you know, it's simple. In the final aspect of our performance, your, uh, your, you know, your cognitive abilities, your ability to think on your feet, your memory recall, your reaction time, your strength, your speed, your stamina, all those things that might be labeled as performance indexes, they are going to be de they are going to be dented, let's say, for, for lack of a better term, uh, by poor quality sleep. They, you know, poor, poor sleep is going to ruin your performance. And that's just a given. So look, that is the nature of what sleep is. That is the nature of that. You know, sleep is just not this thing that we just go to do bed and we wake up and if we wake up, feel tired. That's it. We can catch up on the following night. Look, if you are getting consistently poor quality sleep, then you are really changing yourself biopsychosocially. And that is massive. So if you do have sleep problems, Hey, look, reach out, head over to performance through health.com, check out the packages. We can set up an assessment call, see what is going on for you guys, and we'll take it from there. Thank you. So there we go. The influences that sleep can have on us is pretty crazy all the way down within our body, within our mind, and how that plays out in your behaviors at large. Sleep isn't just a thing that we go through at nighttime. It's a massive influencer on you as a whole being and us as a species. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. If you did, if you have any questions, curiosities, drop them in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and I'll catch you at the next one. Thank you.